This is To Help You Heal, and I'm your host, Marie Monville. We are going to spend 10 minutes talking about healing. What kind of healing do you need? Is it in your mindset? Is it emotional healing? Is it spiritual healing? You know, there's a lot of healing that we all need, and this is where you're going to find it every week, 10 minutes on Tuesday. I'm so glad you're spending this time with me. Welcome back to this week's episode of To Help You Heal. This week, I want to take a take what we've been talking about a little bit further and talk about it from a slightly different perspective, from the lens of scripture. And it's sort of coming from this intersection of several places that I was in the Bible over the past week. I have a membership group called Elevated, and each week in there, we meet on Thursday mornings for a Zoom session, a live session, and last week was our Bible study session, and we're traveling through the book of Hebrews. So in chapter four in the message, it talks about the way that God asks us to receive his promise you know, when he's speaking something to our hearts, when he's calling us to do something. And it talks in there about how God asks us to receive it in faith. And that the reason that the Israelites did not get to enter the promised land was because they didn't receive it in faith. And you know, it's not that that was any kind of concept that I'd never heard before or thought about, but I think the way that it was presented in the message, and I don't always read from the message, but sometimes I really like to, you know, I usually read in the NASB and, and sometimes I like to read it in the message and just get a little different take on it. So when I read in the message, just the simplicity of what it was saying that, you know, when God speaks a promise to us, we are supposed to receive it in faith. And the reason that the Israelites didn't get to enter this place of rest. You know, they didn't get to come into this restful space was because they didn't do that. They didn't receive it in faith. And so for me, it was this aspect of, I don't want to be like them. I don't want to not get this opportunity to enjoy the rest that God prepared for me on the backside of that space. I want to do what he asks. I want to receive it the way that he intends. I want to be able to travel through life, even in the places that are difficult from his rest, not just this place of physical rest, but being able to say, okay, God, even in this thing that I don't know how to do, or this season that is hard for me, I want to do this from your place of rest. I want to do it with the partnership that you offer from this space of saying, I know that you have this all worked out for me. And then I personally have been walking through the Bible, listening to Father Mike Schmitz. I think I might have mentioned this before. He does a really great podcast uh, where he does the Bible in a year. And I love the way that he breaks down the scripture and talks about it. And so each morning when I'm out for my walk with Bruno, I listen to his Bible in a year. And last week, he was reading from Second Kings. He was talking about Elisha. And specifically, you know, he talked through the stories of Elisha and the widow with the oil and then the Shunammite woman. And if you're not familiar with those stories, I'm just going to encourage you to go check those out. But the basic premise is that there's this woman, um, you know, this woman who she doesn't have anything. Her husband has died and and she is without any mechanism of support or finances. She has nothing. And so she says to him, you know, what am I supposed to do? I have nothing. And he said to her, you know, what do you have in your house? And she said, all I have is this jar of oil. And he tells her, you know, go get jars from your neighbors, collect every jar you can find. Don't just get a few and start pouring the oil and you will have enough to be able to sell and pay your debts. You know, she was concerned that she was going to have to sell her children into slavery. He says, well, you're going to be able to pay your debts and you'll be fine. And so she goes and collects these jars and she starts filling them. And I guess her kids are helping her and she asks her son for another jar. And when she ran out of oil, it was the moment that she had no more jars to pour into. And so 
then the next story is about this Shunammite woman, this woman who was older, you know, way past the age of, of childbearing. And she had created this space in her house for Elisha. Every time he traveled through her area, he could come and stay there. And she and her husband would take care of him. You know, they'd feed him and all of this. And so Elisha says to his assistant, basically, ask her what we can do for her. What does she need? And, you know, his assistant comes back and says, well, she doesn't have any kids. You know, she she would like a child. And And so Elisha makes this promise to her, but, you know, she kind of tells him, all right, I'm a little, I'm too old for this. (laughs) You know, um, my time has passed and I don't want you to make a promise to me that's not going to come true. Uh, And, you know, she says to her, he says to her at this time next year, you'll have a child. And she does. But then as the days go forward, her child is out in the field, you know, and he gets a headache and he comes to her and he ends up dying. And, she goes to Elisha. The assistant can see her coming. Elisha can see her coming. The assistant says, hey, you know, is everything okay? What's going on? And she says, it's fine, basically, because she knows that she's not talking to anybody but Elisha. And she goes to Elisha and she says to him, look, didn't I tell you, don't deceive me. Don't make me a promise that I'm not going to get to walk out because my son has died. And so he comes and, you know, you can read about it in chapter four. He heals her son. He comes back to life. And and so reading that aspect of Hebrews four and the, the stand of, OK, when God speaks a promise to us, we're supposed to respond in faith. And then seeing these two instances of these women and how they responded in faith, it it got me thinking. And it started to make me think a little bit differently about some of my past disappointments. Because, you know, I don't know if you're like me, but when I feel something, when I feel like I'm supposed to do something or, you know, I have a, a dream or a desire or whatever I feel like God's saying, it's very easy for me to jump to the ending and create this ideal scenario. And I have come through these times where what happens in the end is nothing like my imagination. It wasn't like anything when I played out. And there can sometimes be that place of disappointment in that. And for me, the way I've kind of wrestled through that is that I need to just let God take me on the journey instead of always thinking I know the ending. But in these stories, it kind of made me see it differently. Because we have this choice, you know, we have to choose, are we going to be like these women who went after it? Or are we going to think that it's not going to happen for us? And if we want to approach God's promises from this place of faith, then I think the answer is clear. We're going to have to be like these women. And it helped me reframe these places of past disappointment to be able to say, you know what, I would rather be disappointed because it didn't turn out quite the way I thought. And and God still did something incredible, or he's working out something that I can't see I would rather come from that standpoint than say, you know what, God doesn't do these things for me and I'm just not even going to try. Because I do think, you know, for all of us, we're going to have a moment and probably more than one where we have to choose to go after something, where we have to choose to be like the Shunammite woman and say, I am going to fight for this. I'm going to fight for my child. I'm going to fight for this place, this dream that I know God gave me. I'm going to fight for that. Or a place like the woman, the widow with the jars, she knew she had nothing. And yet, you know, Elisha says to her, okay, go get jars and not just a few. She's got to choose. How big does she think the blessing's going to be? I would rather be like that widow with the jars and end up thinking, well, I had a lot of jars that didn't end up getting oil. No problem. Versus coming to the end and thinking, ah, there was still oil. I probably could have filled more jars. And I think it's all about, you know, what we do with that promise, how we stand on it in faith to to hold it firmly enough to say, yes, God, I am going after this with you and I will not relent. I will be relentless in pursuit of the dreams that you've placed on my heart. But also holding it loosely enough to say, I trust you with the outcome. It doesn't have to look the way I think, but God, I, I want to go after this all the way with you. I don't want to miss out on a piece of the blessing that you have for me. I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to enter into the space of rest that you created because I couldn't see it. So I want to leave that challenge with you. 
I want to ask you to embrace that place for yourself. Do you receive those promises from God with faith? Do you find yourself in the story of the Shunammite woman and the widow with the oil? And I'm not saying I'm completely like them, but I'm saying I want to be. Do you want to be them too? Do you want to stand with faith in these places of your stories to know that when God opens a moment like that for you, you're going to respond to the promise in faith and you're going to get to the other side and be able to rest in him. So I want to leave you with that challenge this week. Think about that, pray about it, talk with the Lord about it, and then come back next week. You know, I honestly have no idea what we're talking about next week. The reality is I talk to God about the podcast and I try to respond based on what I feel like he's laid on my heart to talk about. And some weeks I know in advance and some weeks I don't. So come on back next week. We'll both be surprised and you'll get to see what God is saying as the follow-up to this episode. I can't wait to continue the conversation then. 